In this lesson, I am going to talk about vector spaces. What is a vector space? A vector space consists of three things. We should have a non-empty set V together with two operations, vector addition and scalar multiplication. The elements of V are called vectors. These two operations here must satisfy the two following properties. First, if you get the sum of two vectors, the answer should still be a vector in V. Next, if you have a scalar and you multiply it with a vector V, the answer should still be in V. We say that the set is closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication. Let me just illustrate what this is saying. If this box is your set V and we get any two elements inside the box V, we have V and W, when we add them, we should not go outside the box. The answer should still be inside your box. Moreover, if I multiply V with any real number, its scalar multiple should also be in V. Aside from this, a vector space must satisfy the following conditions. Here are the axioms for vector addition. First, vector addition must be commutative. Second, it must be associative. And there must be a zero vector. The zero vector is just like your real number zero. When you add the zero vector with any vector, you should get the vector itself. Moreover, every vector should have an additive inverse. When you add an additive inverse of an element with that element, we should be able to get the zero vector. Here are the axioms that must be satisfied for scalar multiplication. First, it should be distributive. When we multiply a scalar with the sum of two vectors, it's the same as getting the scalar multiple of each vectors and adding those. Second, we also have some sort of distributive property here, but take note that the addition here is different from the addition here. This addition over here is your vector addition in V. Maybe I should write this one V. Whereas the addition here is your addition in real numbers. Let me just write R. Whereas here, what kind of addition is this? This is addition, this is the vector addition in V. Next. Scalar multiplication should be associative as well. Again, this is the scalar multiplication defined in V, whereas here, this product AB here, this is multiplication in the set of real numbers. When we multiply the real number 1 with any vector V, we should get the vector itself. How do we check if a set with operations is a vector space? First, we have to identify the set V of objects that will become vectors. Once we have identified that, it's also important that we identify the addition and scalar multiplication operations in V. Now the third step here is the most important part. You have to check this too, that the set V is closed under addition and multiplication. When we add two vectors, it should still be in V. When you get a scalar multiple of any vector, it should still be inside V. Once you check these two properties, you may now proceed in checking the other properties. Why is it important that we have to check this first? Take note that the other properties would not make sense if these two are not even true in the first place. Let us have our first example of our vector space. Suppose that V consists of a single object only, which we denote by the zero. This is our zero vector, and we define this. 0 plus 0 equals 0, and any number times 0 is equal to 0. We have our step 1 already. We know what our V is. It just consists of a single object. We know the operations addition and scalar multiplication. In step 3, we just have to check your closure property. But of course, when you add 0 with itself, the answer is still inside the set. When you multiply 0 with any scalar, you still get the 0 vector. Therefore, it is closed under addition and multiplication. Step 4, we have to check the other properties. 
But the other properties, it's very trivial because it's just zero anyway. I will leave it up to you. We call this the zero vector space or the trivial vector space because it only consists of a single object. Next, let us consider the set of all integers with standard operations. Is this a vector space? Step one, we have to identify our V. Our V is the set of all integers. What do we mean by standard operation? So what is now vector addition here? This vector addition is the usual addition of integers. Take note here that u and v are vectors, so therefore they must be integers. Next, if I multiply a vector v, take note v is an integer, what about our a? a is a scalar, so therefore a is a real number. a dot v is just multiplication. Alright, so we're done with step 1, we're done with step 2. Step three, let's check for the closure property. Is this closed under addition? When we add two integers, do we get another integer? Yes. Is it closed under scalar multiplication? When we multiply a real number with an integer, do we get another integer? No. For example, my a is 1 half. If I multiply that with an integer 1, the answer is 1 half, which is not in v. Your 1 half here is your scalar. Your 1 over here is your vector. So we have a scalar times a vector in v. The answer is not another vector in v. So therefore, the answer here is no. Next, let us consider the set of n tuples. We have a1, a2 up to a n. These are just real numbers, or we say that v is a set of n tuples. And we define the vector space operations to be the usual operations of addition and scalar multiplication. These are our two vectors, u plus v. When we add two vectors, two n tuples, here, we get this n tuple. This is a scalar. This is a real number. Verify that V is a vector space. Step one, we already identified our set V. It consists of n tuples. Step two, we have identified already our operations, our vector addition and our scalar multiplication. Step three is the closure property. Is it closed under addition? Look at this one. If I add two n tuples, the answer is still another n tuple. So therefore, it is again inside the set V. If I have a scalar and I multiply it with an n tuple, the answer is again another n tuple. Therefore, it is closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication. Yes. Let us check the other properties. We've already finished this. Is it commutative? When I add, this is my u plus v. If I add v plus u first, will I get the same number? This is equal to u1 plus v1, u2 plus v2, and so on. However, this addition over here is addition of real numbers, correct? And addition of real numbers is commutative. I can switch this as v1 plus u1, v2 plus u2, and so on. And take note that that is exactly this one over here. So therefore, u plus v is the same as v plus u. I will leave it up to you to check that it is associative as well. It's almost the same as this one. Next, we have to identify if there is a zero element. What is the zero element in our vector space v? Our zero vector is, what do you think? This is the n-tuple consisting of 
zeros because if you have an n tuple when you add it with this n tuple over here you get that same n tuple next we have to check if the additive inverse of any vector exists if my v is v1 up to vn what is my additive inverse it would be negative v1 up to negative vn correct when you add this two you would get the zero vector which in this case is the n tuple consisting of all zeros i will leave it up to you to check this for other properties next let us consider the set of all two by two matrices with real entries and take the vector space operations on v to be this let us verify that this is a vector space our set v is the set set of two by two matrices next these are our operations we're adding two two by two matrices and this one k is a real number here that's just the usual scalar multiplication of matrices let us verify that this is a vector space our very important step is step three identify if it is closed under addition from here if you add two two by two matrices the answer is again another two by two matrix if i have a scalar multiplied to a two by two matrix the answer is again another two by two matrix so therefore yes it is closed under addition and scalar multiplication we're done with this is addition of matrix commutative yes is matrix addition associative yes We've seen this in our previous lectures. What would be our zero vector here? Our zero vector would be the 2 by 2 matrix wherein all entries are 0. Next, if we're given a vector, remember that a vector here would just be a 2 by 2 matrix. Let's say we have A, B, C, D. What would be your negative V here? Of course, it's just the the usual negative of a matrix negative a negative b negative c negative d and then all of these properties we have seen from our previous lectures that this will still be true in the set of matrices remember here again that v and w are two by two matrices we can actually generalize what we did in the previous slides for the set M, M, N. What is this? This is just a set of all M by N matrices. Okay, we don't have to confine ourselves to 2 by 2 matrices. Whatever we did in the previous slides, it's still true in general for any matrix of size M by N. So if we collect all the matrices of size M by N, that would be a vector space. Where in vector addition is matrix addition and the usual scalar multiplication of matrices will be your scalar multiplication next let us consider the set of all polynomials of this form take note here that a0 a1 and a2 are just real numbers what is this saying p2 is just a set of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2 why is it less than or equal to 2 because if a2 is 0 then this would just be of degree 1 correct you can also have a2 and a1 to be 0 and if that is the case the polynomial which is be a constant we define our vector addition to be the usual polynomial addition i wrote this in bold to indicate that they are the vectors here and when it's not bold that means that it will be a scalar just like in this case so if we add two vectors so in this case our vectors are just two polynomials how do we add them it's just the usual addition of polynomial and a scalar multiple of p of x is just the usual multiplication we multiply c with the polynomial we're done with step one this would be step two step three is it closed if i add two polynomials do i get another polynomial yes 
if I have a scalar and I multiply it with another polynomial, is it another polynomial? Yes, as well. So therefore, it is closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication. Next, is, is it commutative? Is polynomial addition commutative? Yes. Is polynomial addition associative? That's yes as well. What is our zero vector? Our zero vector would be the zero polynomial. But the zero polynomial is just the real number zero, correct? Meaning to say your a0 is equal to zero, a1 is equal to zero, and a2 is equal to zero. Next, we have to identify our additive inverse. Let's say v is just a polynomial a0 plus a1x. Take note that here you have to get an arbitrary vector. An arbitrary vector is just a polynomial in this case. What would be its additive inverse? It would be negative a0 minus a1x minus a2x squared, correct? Next, is it distributive? Yes, if I have a times a polynomial plus another polynomial. This is the same as a times p of x plus a q of x, right? So this one here is satisfied as well. Again, I will leave the rest as exercises. Hence, we've seen that the set P2 together with the two operations defined above forms a vector space. What if in this case, we just restrict ourselves to set of polynomials of degree exactly equal to 2. Meaning to say our V is of this form. A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared. Where A0, A1, and A2 are real numbers. However, we have the added condition that A2 is not equal to 0. To make sure that the degree is exactly equal to 2. Will this be a vector space? And of course, the operations here would be the usual polynomial addition and scalar multiplication. Is this still a vector space? Take note that the answer is no. Note that it is possible that when we get two polynomials of degree exactly equal to 2, the sum may not be of degree 2. Why is that? So for example, my u is x squared plus x and my v is negative x squared plus 1. If that is the case, your u plus v would be equal to x plus 1. And that is not in v. So therefore, it is not closed under addition. So therefore, the answer here is no. We can actually generalize what we did in the set P2. If we generalize it to the set and this would be the polynomials of degree, take note, less than or equal to n. This will form a vector space with the usual polynomial addition and scalar multiplication. Let us look at a non-example of a vector space. Our set V here is the set of ordered pairs. Next, step 2, we have to define our addition. Vector addition here is, it says, standard operation of addition. It means that we have x1, x2 added with another ordered pair. It's the standard operation of addition of ordered pairs. x1 plus x2 y1 plus y2. But take note that scalar multiplication here is defined to be this one. When you multiply a scalar with an ordered pair, what you do is you multiply the scalar with the first number, but the second entry will always be equal to 0. This would be our operations. That's step 2. Step 3, we have to check if it is closed. First, is it closed under addition? We have Two ordered pairs. Is the sum again another ordered pair? Yes. If we have a scalar times an ordered pair, the answer is again another ordered pair. So those are satisfied. Let's check for the other properties. 
I will first check for the axioms concerning scalar multiplication because this is a bit different. So first, suppose let's get two vectors here. This is my vector V, this is my vector W. Is this the same as this one? Okay, let's look at the left-hand side first. V plus w, w is x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2. Then I multiply that with A, but according to our definition, I will multiply A to the first coordinate. But the second entry will always be equal to 0. Let's look at this one. The right-hand side, A times V, A times X1, X2 is A, X1, and then 0. When we multiply a scalar with an ordered pair, the second entry will always be equal to 0 plus A. This is V, Y1, and then 0. When we add this two, this is A, X1 plus A, Y1, then 0. They are the same. So this is true. Next, let us verify this one. I will use red for my scalar. I will multiply it with my vector. Let me use blue for that. So we want to check if A plus B times an ordered pair is equal to this. Let's look at the left-hand side. We have a scalar times an ordered pair. What happens is you just multiply the scalar with your first entry here and the second pair would be 0. This is AX plus BX 0. Let's look at the right hand side here. A times XY is AX 0 plus b times xy bx the second entry will be zero this is ax plus bx zero plus zero is zero so therefore this is again true i will leave for you to verify if this is true i will just check if this is true one dot v is it equal to v The left hand side is 1 times an ordered pair. This is equal to 1 times x and the second element is 0 which is the same as x0. This is the left hand side. Whereas the right hand side v is xy. So therefore, this is the property that was not satisfied. Hence, this is not a vector space. I could have shown you earlier that this is not satisfied, but the reason why I did this three is so that you would be trained on how to verify properties. But of course, if you were able to realize immediately that this will not be satisfied because of the fact that we have C times XY is equal to CX0, it automatically kills the second element. You should have an idea by then that this one would not be satisfied. Let's take a look at another example. Again, my set V is a set of all ordered pairs, X, Y. X and Y are any real numbers. This is our usual addition of ordered pairs, but take note that our scalar multiplication is a bit different than X, Y. What this does is that interchanges the two entries. Is V a vector space with these operations? Just like in the previous example, since the scalar multiplication here is a bit different, I would be checking for the axioms concerning scalar multiplication. I would start with the property earlier, wherein we have 1 dot V is that the same as V. Take note that V is closed under addition in scalar multiplication because this product is again an in R2 
this is again in R2. So therefore, it's closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication. Since the scalar multiplication here is a bit different, I would start by checking the axioms concerning scalar multiplication. Let me first start with this one, this property, 1 dot v. Is it equal to v? My scalar is 1 times my vector is an ordered pair. Is that equal to xy? 1 dot xy would be equal to, take note that it will be reversed. It will be 1 times y, 1 times x. And that would not be equal to xy. So therefore, the answer here is no. It suffices to show that one property was not satisfied to say that a set is not a vector space. Let us look at another example. What would be our set V here? Our set V would be the set of all functions on AB. That would be denoted by FAB. And we define vector addition as the usual addition of functions. My scalar multiplication. A scalar times a function is just the usual scalar multiplication of function. What are our operations? Pointwise addition, this one, that's your pointwise addition, and scalar multiplication. Let us determine if this is a vector space. We're already done with steps 1 and 2. We have to check for closure. If I add two functions, the answer is again another function. So yes. If I have a scalar and I multiply it with a function, the answer is again a function. So therefore, it is closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication we're done with this already is function addition commutative yes is function addition associative yes as well what would be our zero vector here our zero vector here would be the zero function when i say zero function it's defined to be zero everywhere what would be the additive inverse of a function f? Its additive inverse would be negative f of x. This would also be easy to verify, so I will leave it up to you as an exercise. Therefore, all of the properties are satisfied. Hence, the set f, a, b, together with these two operations, forms a vector space.